Hello everybody, David here, Mike Zero TPT, and welcome along, welcome along to Martin Lin Chen Son's video for this week. What we're gonna be looking at, we're gonna be looking at this. It's a little jam-packed handy, um, and the box really comes jam-packed. We'll show you that in a minute, but it's a really easy to use, handheld at a fantastic price point that covers two meters, 70 centimeters, and DMR. So it's a stripped down version, doesn't have GPS, doesn't have Bluetooth, it's really bare bones, but boy, does it pack a punch. It's selling exceptionally well because it is so nicely refined for the price. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do today is uh, stay tuned to the end because Tony's gonna announce the winner from last week's competition. So st stay tuned until the end, but let's see what's in the box. First off, the bit that we don't normally read as hams, but we've got a, uh, a nice little manual there. Um, I've had a read through, believe it or not, and it's very detailed. So do take your time. When you've got the radio up and running in your hand, have this next to it and you'll be able to refer to it. So there's the manual. Um, first thing out of the box, we've got the, the body of the um, radio itself. A uh, couple of interesting things on here is nice and simple on the front, nice and simple. And then on the back, obviously this is where our battery will slide in. Um, notice that the belt clip, rather than it being on the battery, it's actually on the body of the unit now. So if your battery for some reason didn't click into place, you're not gonna lose your radio and damage the radio on the floor. So a nice little touch there. So that's the, um, that's the body of the radio itself. Then out of the box, the first thing that normally jumps out of the box actually is this antenna. Uh, this is the, the larger whip that you get uh, with the radio itself. Then we get the nice little stubby antenna. We get a little wall charger there, USB. Uh, so USB charger. Another good feature of the radio, this is USB-C. Most of us have moved across to USB-C now anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. It comes with the cable, a nice easy charging and programming. So USB cable, we've got the clip that I was on about earlier. So this is the clip uh, that will clip onto the body rather than the battery. And talking of batteries, there's one and there's two. So we've got two batteries. Uh, with this kit. We've got a uh, 1800 milliamp hour and we've also got the 2600 milliamp hour. So two batteries. If you're out and about, it's certainly going to prolong the life because you've got two fully charged batteries that you can take with you. And then the last thing is the shoe that the radio will actually sit on. So you can have this on your desk. Again, it's USB-C. So we've got the USB-C connector there on the back. That can sit on your desk and the radio will slot into that. So we're gonna clear the table now. I'm gonna put a battery on the radio and we're gonna have a quick look, turn it on and just see what the uh, display looks like and some of the settings. So we've cleared the box away. We've got the unit. We've put the battery on the back of it. I know it powers up because I've tested it, uh, but we'll just have a quick look um, around the outside and what connections you've got, what buttons you've got as well. So if we start off on this side here, uh, we've got the usual uh, jacks there uh, to plug in any uh, external speaker mics. Uh, we've got the USB-C, which I said about earlier on, which is quite cool because it's got USB-C, so it's easy to charge, easy, easy to get cables in there. Um, and you're not figuring out which way around your cable has to go. Uh, that's also got a dust flap on it. And on this side, we've got our PTT, and then we've got Another two buttons which help you maneuver between VFOA and VFOB, and also set whether you're in digital mode or analog mode. But within the menu, you can assign these to do different things. So you can simply go in and have those set to exactly what you want them to. Uh, so you can use them as uh, uh, quick reference buttons uh, to change the radio's functionality on how you want it to work for you. On the top here, Obviously we've got the on and off button, uh, also controls the volume, 
and then we've got almost like a multi knob so uh, this will help you switch through frequencies you know if you're trying to find a frequency any menu item that you have set up this will help switch between uh, the various options that you've got within the menus so let's turn it on and what we're going to do have a quick look in the menu so if we hit the menu button so we've got the menu we've got the list here at the menu and um, the color display really makes a big difference actually uh, and with these two buttons, you can go up and down the list. And as you can see, it's very, very comprehensive. You can pretty much change every aspect of this radio within these configurable settings, whether it be how long the backlight stays on um, or whether you want to scan through the frequencies that you've got programmed in for two meters, because not only does this do DMR, it does the two meters and 70 centimeters analog. So you can put all your repeaters in that way too, and you can scan through those. So uh, you've got the main settings there. You've got um, the record. So you obviously you can record your QSOs with this and so on and, you, and your call log as well. So you can see what conversation is almost like a, uh, a QRZ uh, confirmation list. So you can see what calls and who you've spoken to. So it's a really, really complex list. And even if we go down to settings, if we go down to settings and then we're into settings, uh, and then you've got the radio set, the channel set, and the device info. So um, you can really tailor this on how you want to work it. And within there, as I said earlier, you can also pre-program your buttons to do what you want them to do when you press them or when you press and hold them. And DMR. Now, if you want to go and have a little listen to DMR to find out exactly what it sounds like, you can go over to uh, Hoseline. Uh, we'll leave a link in the description. So you can click that and go and have a listen. Lots of rooms all over the world, conversations happening instantaneously all over the place. And you can go and have a listen to those before you get involved if that's what you'd like to do. But what you do need to do is to go and get registered and you'll get registered at radioid.net. You have to be a licensed amateur radio operator and be, have the license to give to them to get registered. But once you're registered, you can then start loading up your code plug or contact list or database in your radio that will allow you to interact with some of these rooms, uh, have direct uh, contacts with some of your friends. Uh, and that's what you need to do is get yourself registered, get your radio programmed up with your contact list code plug. You can get the software from the Anytone website and you can also download basic code plugs that will allow you to put all of the IDs. So you have an up being on DMI, you'll have your own ID. You'll be able to program all of those up into your radio. So when somebody is talking in a room, literally just like your phone, when somebody rings you on your phone and you've got their number programmed in your phone, it'll come up with their name and whatnot. That's pretty much what we're doing with it, with the code plug uh, in simple terms. And once you've done that, you can then over RF call into a, a DMR room via a repeater. Uh, like I said, over RF in your local repeater. But um, that's not the end of the world if you don't live near a DMR repeater. Uh, you can get, we sell Zumspots, uh, which is a little device that will connect to your internet that your radio will be able to communicate with over RF, low power. We have to make sure it's on low power. And then we'll be able to access these rooms and conversations and friends via the internet, but you'll still go out on RF in some places. But at first, keep it really simple. Get yourself registered, get your code plug in, figure out how you're gonna connect to the DMR network, whether it's gonna be over RF with your local repeater or, or with a little uh, ZUM spot um, in, in your house connected to your own internet. That's pretty much it for this radio. So the price point is amazing. It's sub 120 pounds. Uh, it, it comes jam packed. You've got your two batteries. You've got your two antennas. You've got your shoe to put the actual radio in to charge it, um, it and the programming lead, USB-C. Uh, no Bluetooth, no GPRS. However, it's a lovely little radio for the price. Full color, DMR two meters, 70 centimeters. Now, I can probably hear you saying, Zumspot, Dave, Zumspot, what's, what's that? I wanna know about that because if I get this radio, I'm gonna to wanna to be able to use it and maybe I need a Zumspot, maybe I'm not near a repeater. What we've got for you today is John is gonna come along in a minute and uh, he's gonna give you a, a little overview of the Zumspot that 
uh, we, we stock. We stock several different variants, but it'll give you an overview of that and explain just how you can use little radios uh, to talk big on the DMR network. Let's go across to John and he can start talking to you about the ZUM spots. Thank you, David. My name is John Power. I work in the sales team. My call sign is 2E0EZK. David's obviously giving you an overview to the 168. I'm going to go through the Pi Star configuration and how that, that Pi Star on the ZUM spot will allow you to communicate from the 168 to the ZUM spot, enabling you to talk to people in the UK and all over the world. So this is the PiStar platform. PiStar is its own standalone operating system, and this will enable you to connect to the Zoom spot and for the handheld to connect to the Zoom spot as well, and obviously connect to the DMR network. I'm not gonna go through how to connect to 168 to the, to the Zoom spot. There are videos on our channel already covering the Fusion and DSTAR. So when you get onto the PiStar platform configuration window, You've got a number of important options that have to be ticked. So as you scroll down, you can see, you've got the host name, the platform, and the version that, of the uh, Pi Star. Control software, these need to be ticked. So MMDV host needs to be ticked. Simplex node needs to be ticked as well. As you scroll down to the MMMDV host configuration, you can select your mode. So for, for the example, we've got DMR and DSTAR ticked. As you scroll down further, because these um, spots have OLEDs, this is a setting here. Now this is configured in the image, so you shouldn't really need to change that. But it is important, every time you change one section, you need to apply the change. Then general configurations, you'll see its host name is PiStar. You've got a call sign, which is my call sign. Below your call sign, you would put your DMR ID number. This is a radio frequency that you will communicate now. On the radio, the frequency is set as a repeater, but with no offset. So f f the frequency on this Zoom spot is 431.150.00. That will be the repeater's frequency with, no, with zero offset. Then you scroll down further. You can set your country, town location, longitude. The rest of it down here, you generally leave alone. You do have another option where it says private or public. Rule of thumb, when you first start, leave it on private. If you are going to start sharing it with your neighbours or people close by, then public, but then you are looking into getting an NOV. The APR um, S you can leave alone. Um, dashboard language, obviously UK, but you, there are other language options. DMR configuration, you've got, you got the DMR gateway, and here it allows you different options for Europe, Belgium, France, different countries, different networks, but you do, do need to contact your local DMR provider, whether it be Braemeister or Phoenix, because there are some security um, passwords and so forth you will need to put into this configuration for you to be able to connect to the DMR network. Once you go down, You've got D-Star configuration, um, call sign, remote password. Then you scroll down again, mobile G uh, GPS configuration. I, can ge I generally leave that alone unless you want to actually enable the GPS mobile to track your location. Then generally, when you start out, under firewall configuration, set all to private and all to on. Now, this is a bit where most people um, get confused as a wireless setup. At this stage, you won't see anything on the screen because the Zoom spot isn't connected. So we're going to connect a cable, which normally you'd have plugged into your power supply, a little battery pack in your car. Now it's booted up, and this is generally what you normally see on the screen. You will see a call log when people transmit on DMR, and we're seeing you'll see their call signs or ID numbers as well. This is a bit which normally gets people a bit flustered, a bit confused. So you've got Wi-Fi, you've got Refresh, Reset adap Adapter, and Config. If you go Config Wi-Fi, you'll see that we've already tethered this. So this is actually tethered to my phone. So when you're mobile in your car, ideal when you can't get into repeater nearby. Scan network. So you scan your network. So if you want to add um, 
your local Wi-Fi yeah, in, in, indoors or your abroad. So here we go. There's a list of available networks nearby. So my phone is already registered. We've got shop, and another local business network, another local business network. So what you do, you would select, I would select shop. So that's the shop name. And this is where you put your password for your Wi-Fi network. Once you do that, you save and connect. So it will search for that network, it will save it. The Zoom spot will reboot. But if it doesn't, you can go to the top and reboot it. When it powers back up, it'll be looking for the available networks. So when I'm mobile, if I'm in the car, it'll find my mobile phone. If I'm indoors, at home, or at work, it'll find the local uh, registered network that it's logged on to. So it gives you complete portability and you know, you're set up there and then. You can reset this, change this, delete networks. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's no problem. It's very straightforward. There is a step-by-step -step guide on our website with a manual pie star. Just take your time, go through it, and you'll have hours and days of fun uh, being able to talk to, to people all over the world on DMR. And this is a great radio. And with this, a battery pack, you know, and even a laptop, you're good to go. So thank you. That's an overview of pie star. Now over to Tony. Well, thank you, David and John, for that wonderful presentation. And I may even take a look at DMR myself. Yes, you thought you were going to get away without seeing me again this week. However, I am back and back for a very good reason. Now, for those of you that watched last week's video on our used equipment, you may remember that we did that wonderful competition to win this lovely Shack Clock Pro. Well, we have a winner. I asked you to leave a story in the comments below letting me know what your first radio was and maybe what you're using now. Just a, just a nice story basically as to uh, maybe how you've got into the hobby. Well, I've got our winner. I had a look through and thank you to the hundreds of you that left your comments. It took me a, a good afternoon to go through them all. However, we do have a winner and I'm going to just quickly summarise on the story just because to me it kind of sums up amateur radio and it's a little bit like my story with amateur radio as well. Quick summary on this one is the amateur in question uh, was basically not very well in hospital for a period of time and at this point they weren't licensed and now this is the interesting part of it because it kind of took me back to when I first sort of took the license and I wasn't too well at the same time and it really focused me uh, going forward with life and, and getting over the illness at the time. So this uh, amateur here, who will be named shortly, he met a couple of guys in hospital. Obviously he had nothing to do whilst he was in there. And they kind of suggested, well, look, we're radio amateurs. Who ever thought about amateur radio? And he thought, well, why not? Took the ball by the horns, studied for the exam, passed, which is great. So well done there. Got a foundation license, purchased a handheld radio, bought a, a YSX kit, within a couple of months was active and speaking to people all around the world, even though he couldn't actually leave his room at the time. And to me, that's just perfect. That's, that's how great our hobby is. And I just had to give the prize to, uh, to Simon. So Simon M7 uh, Tango Sierra Sierra, if you're listening or watching, hopefully you are, you are now the proud owner of this shack clock. And it does come with a remote control, which I know will be very handy for you. Anyway, absolutely wonderful story. And thank you as well to radio amateurs out there because it absolutely changed this guy's life. Anyway, take care and hopefully see you very soon.